Hey everybody, TJ here with Shop by Tools, and today we're going to talk about cutting plywood. And to help us better understand it, today's presentation is going to look at different bits, different types of plywood, feeds and speeds, some cutting tips, hold downs, and tolerances. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, getting into cutting the plywood, we better understand the material a little bit better first. So simply put, plywood is a bunch of layers that are glued and pressed together. You have an outer veneer, which is the, called the face. Some plywood has a good face on both sides. Some of it only has it on one side, and some of it has it on neither. All depends. Is it just a furniture grade plywood that you're going to be seeing both faces? Is this an underlayment and a construction of a building that you're never going to see? Or do you only need to see the one face? So you're paying for what you get as far as the outer face. Uh, there's different cross bands and core that go in the middle of the plywood glue up. Typically the face grain and the core are your structural pieces and the cross bands aren't as strong so if you're going to be using the plywood for something structural say a chair that you're going to sit on any parts that need to have you know withstand some weight you're going to want to match those with your face grain. Like many other forms of lumber plywood does have a rating and usually it'll have a stamp on one of the edges saying what it is and really you're paying for the higher dollar that you're putting into purchasing is the type of plywood with the type of plies they're putting in there the voids the gaps the sizes and you're also paying for the veneers like I said in the previous slide there are uh, one or two good faces you know if it has one solid face of veneer without any what they usually call a little football shaped patch uh, where they're patching in where a knot would have been you're paying for more so there's different grades and when you're getting ready to order your plywood just talk with your lumber supplier and they'll help you go through this stuff but uh, lots of different sizes uh, obviously the four foot by eight foot is the standard one that we see in a lot of lumber yards but there are different sizes that can be worked with five foot by five foot is a common one and I also have been seeing a lot of these places carrying just smaller pieces around two foot by two foot in case you don't need the entire sheet okay pros and cons obviously we talked about voids and gaps that can really throw off especially when you you, you don't see it in the middle of the plywood until you've cut into it then it's too late especially if it's going on a nice piece of furniture that you're doing uh, the other thing I really want to point out is the thickness of the veneer a lot of these plywoods, I'm looking at the upper left picture right now, have a really thin veneer. So if you're not using a good bit or the right bit, you could rip that veneer out, which is going to throw off your end result. Um, and then the one in the very middle here, this one's actually a Baltic birch uh, plywood where it has a lot more layers to it. Still an odd number of layers, uh, which is what they use in the plywood. But what this is, it has more layers, makes it a little bit more stable and structurally sound for when you're making projects. So veneer, voids and gaps, and then being just a big panel like that that's four foot by eight or larger is, is being warped so uh, you know those are all goods and bads of the material it's very convenient to have something that's already glued up and that size but it's not very convenient when it's that size and it's warped so we'll have to look at different hold down methods and we're going to look at into cutting this material and we're not ripping veneers well, a lot of people who are familiar with cutting plywood would say a compression bit is ideal because a compression bit has the characteristics of an up spiral and a down spiral built into it. But for people who are just getting started, you do want to be careful just throwing in a compression bit and start cutting with one, it's really expensive. And two, if you're not plunging it in the right way, you could damage the bit or damage your plywood. So let's look a little bit about bits here. A straight flute. Is, is ideal you know it's just a good all-around general purpose bit and I would definitely recommend using that type of bit for anybody in the world of CNC right now who is just starting to get cutting uh, an up spiral is a nice bit for when you're drilling holes in plywood because it pulls the sawdust up out of the kerf what you do want to be careful with is if it's a thin veneered plywood and it's not maybe the highest quality plywood and same with your bit if it's not the sharpest bit you do need to be careful with an up spiral which is pulling up that it does not tear the upper veneer and rip that edge off your board so a lot of people would say hey a down spiral sounds good because the bottom of it is up against your spoil board it's pushing down so it's not going to rip that sacrificial I'm sorry it's not going to rip 
the uh, veneer off the top. However, you do need to be careful because what a lot of people do with uh, plywood is they drill holes like they would in any other material. And if you're drilling especially a quarter inch hole with a down cut, you can, downward force may help with the thin sheets. It may help hold it down, but it may compact the chips in a groove. So you really don't want to ever be drilling holes with a down cut. So you do need to be careful which bit you have put in. And obviously just by looking at the picture here, you can see they look the same. One spins to the left, one spins to the right. So uh, I will tell you personally, uh, cutting a lot of plywood projects, sometimes it's a combination of bits where I'll be using the up cut for drilling holes and I'll be using the down cut for making my long profile cuts. Or if you have access to a compression bit, you know, that's great for doing the long cuts but again you wouldn't want to be using a compression bit for drilling holes because it's compressing the chips the sawdust down into your cut so I guess I would go all the way back here to the left side and say that straight flute is a good all-around general purpose cutting bit and would be great recommendation for you guys who are first getting started in cutting plywood when it comes to selecting the bit for cutting plywood there are lots of different manufacturers out there. We've made it easy. If you just go to shopbytools.com, go to our online store, we have a lots of different bits on here listed for you. And if you go on, you find the bit, say you're looking for a chip breaker, you can uh, 3 8 diameter, you can click right on it. You can go in. It tells you what brand. It tells you the part number. It tells you what it's ideal for cutting. And I would just recommend getting started by selecting one of our bits and putting that in your tool database a lot of times the manufacturer does come with the feeds and speeds that you need for getting that set and that will be good for getting you going with your bits now we gotta get into holding the part down we can't cut it if we can't hold it so let's look at a few different techniques here a vacuum pump is an ideal way to go you can throw your panel up there turn on the vacuum make your cut turn it off and you're ready to move on the next one over is a nail gun that shoots plastic nails, which is very convenient. If you ran into a nail with your router bit, you're not going to damage your $75 uh, compression cutter use, hitting a plastic nail. Where down on the bottom right corner, I have a set of drywall screws in the corner where if you run into one of those, that drywall screw that is practically worthless will wreck your $75 bit faster than you can hit the emergency stop switch. But there are safe ways for setting up files, and we'll look at those a little bit further down here. I am going to point out that adding a ramp is very nice because it's a lot easier on the router bit getting down into your cut it's easier on your spindle as well and making your cut but you do need to be careful if you're gonna add a ramp to plywood you need to make sure the ramp direction of cut lines up with the veneer if you do a ramp cross grain especially on a cheaper quality plywood you're gonna rip your veneer to shreds and wreck you know wreck that edge you know if it's something being covered up underneath you're not too concerned about so be it but a lot of us that are using these nicer plywood materials we were showing off the veneer we actually spent the money to get the veneer on there so uh, a couple things that you'll want to do in your software while you're just setting up your tool path is you will want to add the ramp and you'll also want to add the ramp direction by using your start point and that can all be done within the software. Make sure your start point and your ramp direction matches the veneer direction while it's cutting. So you're cutting with the veneer. You have the option for adding tabs in your tool path. And obviously if you have small parts or you don't have a vacuum hold down, you will need to hold your part to your scrap material. And I showing you here two different types of tabs you have the 2d tab and the 3d tab and I will tell you up here I do have a screenshot of a tab size that I like to use which is 0.4 in length 0.24 in height with a 3d tab and I just I think that's a good tab for cutting plywood some may say it's a little too large and that's fine you can always uh, make it smaller as you get more comfortable with the material that you're working with but I like this tab because I like to put this on here and then when the part is done being cut I actually flip the plywood over 
and I will take a utility knife and I will actually push down through the back side of the tab and it helps release it. There's just a little bit of material left which I can clean off with the sander or if I'm going to do a round over with a router, uh, I, the router bit will round that over. And I do also like to put tabs going with the grain. Um, again, it's veneer, it's plywood, but with the veneer, if you match it, that's again with the structural part of the the lengthways and I do find that tabs come come out a little bit easier when you nip them out and they clean up a lot easier that way too. So let's look at setting up the job for plywood. So you can see on the right here I have a set of digital calipers along a long board and I like to pinch the board I like to pinch the calipers on the board and run it back and forth and get an average there of the material thickness which I'm seeing at 0.47 so that's what I put in there for 0.47 and I will tell you too I personally prefer to do a Z0 to the machine bed with plywood especially with doing through cuts because uh, the plywood isn't always the most consistent. Now again, everyone has their personal preferences and that's great. Whatever works for you is all that matters. I'm just telling you some tips that I have uh, worked with over the years and it could be a great debate we could do <laughs> for our, one of our next trainings. But um, I find that material thickness is not always consistent with plywood and with humidity and stuff that comes and goes, moisture content, uh, material expands and contrasts. When I zero my Z, zero position, to the machine bed, it helps me um, get rid of any material discrepan discrepancies there. So, again, personal preference. So you can see material thickness of 0.47. And I'm pointing that out here because this next slide uh, actually have a cut depth of 0.49. So uh, another way to help get around material thickness discrepancies is giving a little bit deeper of a cut depth. So a uh, little disclaimer here, the picture on the right is just a, that's a shop bot being used and used and used and used and, you know, different operators that share this machine have, you know, went to different depths and we've had, we can clearly see a, a nice little mistake there on the bottom right corner of it. And I'd like to point that out because it happens. All right. You, you're going to cut in too deep. Whoops. It happens. Bummer. Move on. Let's, let's fill that up with some putty and, and chalk it up as a story to put in our, uh, educational library for moving on and, and remembering why we read our screens and our messages and it happens to us. So uh, again, my material was 0.47 and my cut depth is 0.49. So again, just 20 thousandths, a little bit deeper down into my sacrificial board. And I, I'd rather cut into the shop bot base, the 20 thousandths, than not have cut all the way through my material. So just a quick tip in there on those last two slides is uh, zeroing to the actual spoil board on the shop bot and giving it a cut depth of just a 20 thousandths deeper into the into the spoil board ensures that I get all the way through my plywood. This here's for our operators that are going to be using screws. Obviously a drywall screw going down through a piece of plywood into MDF is quick and easy and convenient but it's going to be a bad news when you're bit runs into that screw head. So you can see on the left here I've completely nested the part that's going to be cut. And once that's been nested in tool path, what I do next is I go and I grab the draw circle command and I go around and I place circles in areas that I know are far enough away from any other tool paths. And those would be safe spots to put a screw. So then I'll go to the drilling tool path, and just set a cut depth of, you know, 20, 30 thousandths. And uh, typically the tool that I'm going to use here is whichever one's going to be the first one that's making my cut, so it save you a bit change. So if I'm going to go cut with a quarter inch up cut on this job, I'm going to drill all those holes first. I'll put that bit in the shop bot spindle first, zero that one out, and then I'll use that for my drilling. So the key to this tool, this method here, is actually to create a tool path called hold down tool path, save that as a separate file, put your material out on your shop bot, run this. And, and again, there's no hold down currently being administered. Uh, you could put clamps on the edge if you need to, but when you have you know panels like this, there is enough weight that when you're just doing a little dimple cut of you know, 30,000 straight down and straight up making a drilling tool path, you don't have to worry about it taking the part and, and sending it sideways or moving it around on your shop bot. So yes, it is a free floating 
piece of plywood on the shop bot. I go and I run the hold down tool path, which is just those screw where those screws are going to be. It's just those little dimples that it goes around. The gantry moves out of the way. I will now physically come with a screw gun and a set of screws of the right length, go through my plywood down into the MDF, and now once that's held down, I'll go ahead and run the actual file. So that's just a method for using screw locations where you need to get them out in the middle and you obviously don't want to hit them with your cutter. This one really applies to all materials, but just want to point out anybody that's going to be doing any joinery, you got to remember to add your dog bones and T-bones. Remember, you're cutting with a round bit, and a lot of us are using a quarter inch or a three-eighths bit. So how do you get that square inside corner when you're using a round bit? So remember, under the fillet command is where you would add your dog bones or T-bones, and you click to add those in the direction that you want. And uh, just remember, you're going to need those for any type of joinery that you're doing. Um, mortise and tenon style. There's a lot of factors that apply to tolerancing plywood, especially joinery, you know, uh, moisture content, location in the country, and humidity levels, uh, brand, quality, all this stuff can go together, but these are just some ones that have worked and I think this would be a good all-around way to get started with. So you can see here the material thickness for this stool was uh, approximately 0.69 with the calipers and for the slots where that would have to go in I went ahead and just made that 10 thousandths larger so it's not the, that much bigger that direction it's just a, it gives it a little bit extra space for glue a little bit more space for expansion and contraction and I've just found you don't need to go too large that way it is nice to keep that tolerance pretty tight it helps keep things really uniform in that direction however the other direction here where you can see the tenon sticking up at 0.98 I went ahead and made that one inch so made that one a little bit taller so that one has, a, has 20 thousand so it's a larger tolerance in that direction and that's more for where your glue and uh, stuff's going to be so again just uh, you're going to have to get out there really and see what works best for you. This might be too tight. This might be too loose. This is just a good starting point to get you going. And then as you start working with different joinery and different material, ply, you know, different types of plywood, you're going to find the ones that work for you. And, and just take note of what works for you so you have it for uh, when you go to do that job again down the road. To start wrapping up here, know your material okay there's different types of plywood one that you're going to be working with get familiar with it before you cut into uh, a big job S bit selection is key i would use our website as a good resource for different types of bits uh, dial in the feeds and speeds that work for you. You test this on scrap pieces with this plywood. Make sure you're not ripping the veneer out of there. If you're going to be adding ramps, make sure the ramps are going with the grain, with the veneer on the outside. You don't want to be ripping up that veneer. Uh, check your tolerances in your drawing file, but also go and cut it on your shop bot and make sure those the actual physical pieces that are in your hand that fit together. Make sure those tolerances are right. Check these parts, ones and twos, uh, while you're first doing your designing and getting it the way you want. Uh, tabs, there's some tab sizes in here. So there's a lot of information in these last few slides that I think are going to be really useful for getting you up and going cutting plywood. Uh, today is just one resource of many. ShopBotTools.com is a pl great place. You can go check out our store if you're looking for the bits. If you're looking for more training, we have more training on different types of materials, cutting, and different projects. We have projects. Our support page is great here. If you go to our support page, we have a whole section and set of videos on helping you get up and get started. So thank you for showing up in today's training. We really appreciate it. We love doing these online with you guys, and we'll see you all here in about two weeks when we are ready for our next one.